SD1 Rudder Build Episode 1. Here's the disclaimer. Just to make sure that everybody's aware, uh, this is not an instructional uh, video in any format. Uh, I'm just a normal bod uh, going through the instructions which they've given uh, for building uh, this rudder. Uh, so, by all means, uh, you know, look at it and ask questions, but uh, make sure you follow the instructions as they come to you for your aircraft. Uh, and don't consider this to be uh, an educational uh, video. It's just uh, me sort of really logging what I, what I do and for you to have a look so you, so you don't make the same mistakes as I do. I'm bound to make mistakes somewhere going on the lines. Now, I have built several uh, model aircraft, uh, one might say hundreds, um, and I've scratch built own design from plans, from kits, and uh, so I may do things a little differently to their instructional layout, uh, going, going by uh, my previous experience, one might say. Um, effectively to get to similar sort of points but maybe in a slightly different way. So let's get started. I've had a look at uh, all the bits of wood which have come and uh, have really nicely uh, milled out, a CNC milled, but there is a slight edge uh, where the mill has uh, just sort of ripped the fibre slightly. So using my trusty uh, sanding blocks, using carpet tape to hold uh, the abrasive on. I'm using 180 grit uh, for this. I'm just going to uh, scuff and flatten those, those little areas out. Now I tend to go along the grain so I don't turn everything into, in, into hairiness just to get rid of those sort of burrs which we've got going on there. And this material is all very very thin so uh, be quite careful that you're not going to uh, end up sanding things away. Now I've noticed that uh, the end, I don't know if it's going to show, isn't cut evenly, it's cut to, to an angle and there is a reason for that uh, if you read through the instructions that this lot all gets glued onto uh, one side skin and the side skin has a square section uh, material glued to the training edge so one part of this is at 90 degrees <clears throat> so that will butt up against that, uh, that square edge but then that square section is actually chamfered uh, to take the second skin so uh, it's going to work out which orientation that is uh, and I'll set those up and mark them accordingly uh, in, a, in a little bit so here I am just going through deburring everything, ready to go. Reading the instructions, always good to read the instructions. This is the left side and that's the bottom skin so that is going to be top LH. Then again, I've got to do the other components to make sure they're the right way up. Now, the quality of the wood is fantastic, really. Oh, it's good, actually. It's got a lot of uh, grain intersections in it, which uh, is good. A, if anybody's building a wood aircraft, uh, if you look in uh, your appropriate uh, aviation authorities uh, build requirements and things uh, for qualities of wood, it'll give you the different types of different types of wood and the number of uh, grain intersections per inch or per unit of, of measurement, and uh, also the amount of runoff the grain can have, in other words, yeah, how far 
offline uh, how much it slopes as it goes along uh, the piece of wood. So uh, uh, it's not allowed to, to, to run out, uh, particularly for any structural members. Uh, and this looks uh, that wood's grain's running pretty much parallel. You can sort of see it's running very parallel. Uh, I don't know if it will show up on the camera. If you actually look, there's uh, quite a few grain lines there per inch. So it's within acceptable levels. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put this is a little uh, marker, so put a mark there. Oops, flex a little bit there, don't want that. There, flex. Right up against the edge, mark. straight edge on. Line there, line there. So I'm, I'm marking it for all the five millimeter square sections used on the ribs, the spar, to uh, stiffen up this 0.8 millimeter ply. Uh, make up the structural members. So I'm just going to use this bevel gauge just to set up Angles there. Twice, okay, so I want that angle set. We've got quite a steep angle going on there. Size because it's not 90 degrees across. So the bottom two ribs have these uh, compound uh, angles on, need to be marked, and then you can cut them. Uh, the spinning angle.
So I cut them fairly close to the right angle and then I use my uh, sanding block system to make sure that all the angles are correct and double check. Hence I'm using two bevel gauges but you could get away with just one really. And now I'm just measuring up and uh, going to cut the two to length. So we come to the more complicated bits now. I need to uh, get my angles sorted out. So I've got that. Okay. Supporting the strip using the other strip underneath. Do it with that, but I don't. So, so here I go, just cutting through using the uh, sanding block again to make sure I have a good edge. Looks like that's got that. So, hopefully, now I can put that one in there. Just try it out, so I will clap on that. tight joint and it's all fitting nicely that will look great job to do job done thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can remember go fly and feel the sky